welcome back to this channel. And for this video, we will focus on topic 1.3, classification of organic compound. We will focus mainly on two things, which are functional group and also homologous series. We will look at what is actually functional group and what is actually homologous series and what makes them different. First and foremost, let's focus on functional group. What is actually functional group? Functional group is an atom or a group of atoms in an organic compound which will characterize the molecule. The functional group will also enable the molecule to react in a specific way. All right. I can give you a very simple example over here is alkene. All right. Alkene is the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. So, the group of atoms that characterize alkene is the C double bond C. All right, it's the carbon carbon double bond. Another example that you might always come across is OH. OH is the functional group of what? Is the functional group of alcohol. All right, so when I say I have an ethanol, it's a CH3, CH2, OH. So the OH will characterize the alcohol. If I have butanol, so I have a CH3, CH2, 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 OH. So both of these is also alcohol. Why? Due to the presence of OH in your molecule. So the OH is actually the functional group hydroxyl and it will characterize the alcohol molecule. That is what we mean by functional group. The function of the group is to characterize the molecule. Okay? When the molecule are having the same functional group, all right, when the molecule are having the same functional group, the molecules then will have a similarity in name. For example, the alcohol just now, when you have a 2-carbon, we call it ethanol. All right, when you have a 3-carbon, we call it a propanol. And then you might have butanol, pentanol, and so on. So when they are having the same functional group OH, they are alcohol. So the naming will be very similar. The same thing applies when you are having a carbon-carbon double bond, when you are having an alkene. You might have ethene, propene, butene, and so on. All this is because they are having carbon-carbon double bond as the functional group. That's why they are having a very similar name. They will also undergo a similar type of reaction because they are holding the same functional group. The group that gives rise to the character over here is the same. So, they will undergo a very similar type of reaction because OH is the one that undergo reaction. The same thing applies to a carbon-carbon double bond over here. So, your ethene, propene, butene, all that will undergo a similar type of reaction because the reaction happened to the carbon-carbon double bond. So, when the organic compound are holding the same functional group, most likely they will undergo the same type of reaction. Other than going through the same type of reaction, the organic compound that holding the same functional group will also having the same chemical property because they are holding the same functional group. The group that characterize them are the same, so they are definitely having the same chemical property. How about homologous series? What is actually homologous series? Homologous series is a group of compound with the same functional group. A group of organic compound with the same functional group is what we call homologous series. For example, in the alcohol homologous series, all right, in the alcohol homologous series, you have ethanol that holding OH, you have propanol that holding OH you have butanol that holding OH. So, ethanol, propanol, and butanol, they are located in the same homologous series because they are sharing the same functional group. 
The homologous series over here is alcohol. The functional group over here is OH. Can you differentiate that? The homologous series is like the big family that have the same functional group. So inside the family, you have members, all right? The members in the homologous series, we call homolog, okay? We call them homolog. So in the homologous series of alcohol, they are sharing the functional group of OH, okay? The homologous series is alcohol and the same functional group in the family is OH. Okay, and the homolog over here is what? What is the members in this homologous series? The members is like ethanol, all right? Then your propanol, all this is your homolog in the homologous series of alcohol. They are having the same functional group, okay? They are having the same functional group. So, functional group are the group of atom or atoms that give rise to the character like OH, like carbon-carbon double bond, like COOH, your carboxylic acid. Homologous series is a big family. Homologous series is a big family that having a lot of members and all the members must have the same functional group. All right, see that? Okay, so we move on to homologous series, a bit more about homologous series. The homolog, all right, or we call it the members in the homologous series must have the same general formula. For example, if I'm talking about alkene today, so alkene general formula, everybody know, is a CNH2N. So, everybody in the alkene must be holding CNH2N general formula. It will differ by a CH2 unit. Simple example, if I'm having an ethene, then it will be CH2 double bond CH2. If I'm having a propene, then it will be CH2 double bond CH, CH3. Okay, and you can see over here, guys, that is my C2H4. Okay, can you see a CNH2N? Over here is your C3H6. All right, so you can see that they're sharing the same general formula, CNH2N. Also, they are differed by a CH2 unit. In the other words, they are differed by a carbon. All right, they are differed by a carbon. You can have c 4 H8 like CH2 double bond CH CH2 CH3. That is your butene and that is your C4 H8. Can you see that? All this is homolog. Alright, all this is homolog in the homologous series of alkene because they are sharing the same functional group carbon carbon double bond. There will be differ in molar mass. Obviously, the molar mass will be different because the number of carbon is changing. Simple. When the number of carbon is changing, obviously, the molar mass will change. The physical property will also change because the mass is changing. When the molar mass is changing, boiling point, melting point, everything will change accordingly. Okay? And obviously, when the molar mass is increasing, boiling point also increase that is your physical property changing okay all right next similar chemical property we have talked about it when you share the same functional group when you have the same functional group the chemical property will be the same because the group of atoms that characterize the compound that characterize all the homolog are the same so the chemical property will be the same and since the chemical property is the same, therefore, most of the time, all this homolog can be prepared by using the same method. They must be coming from the same recipe because they're holding the same functional group. All right. So that is the difference between functional group and also homologous series. Homologous series is a set of people. It's a group of people 
that share the same functional group. Okay, simple, easy. We have 17 homologous series to go through in this video. All right, but they're very simple. Make sure you memorize them and also make sure you write their name correctly. We don't accept any error in spelling. So make sure you get their name right, okay? The first one, the simplest, is your homologous series of alkane. Alkane, guys. So that is your carbon-carbon single bond, but we don't take carbon-carbon single bond as a functional group. So there is no functional group over here. The structure is as simple as carbon single bond, all right? So the carbon single bond, everybody knows that the carbon must be holding four bond. So the homolog over here, the homolog for the homologous series will be, for example, methane, your CH4, your ethane, C2H6, all right? Then you can have your propane, C3H8, that is your propane, okay? So in this homolog, you can see that they are deferred by one carbon unit. The molar mass is increasing, that's why the physical property also changing. Next, we have alkene. So alkene with the E over here, you know that the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. So the functional group over here is carbon-carbon double bond. The structure of carbon-carbon double bond is something like this, all right? So the example that you can have for homologous series alkene could be CH3, CH, double bond, CH, CH3. That is your alkene. Other than in a straight chain, you can have it in the form of cyclic. You can have cyclopentene. That is also the homologous series of alkene where it's holding the functional group of carbon-carbon double bond. Other than the straight chain like this and the cyclic, we can have branches. To be honest, we don't really mind on how the carbon is being arranged. We only mind on the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. As long as you have the presence of carbon-carbon double bond, it doesn't matter how your compound look like because the one that gives rise to the functional group is the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. So it could be like this and we still call it alkene because the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. All right. Next, we have alkyne. So what is alkyne? Alkyne means the functional group is carbon-carbon triple bond and the structure of carbon-carbon triple bond. Carbon, triple bond with carbon. That is how your structure should look like. Or in the other words, your structure must contain this group, the carbon-carbon triple bond, okay? So the carbon triple bond could be as simple as holding just hydrogen, triple bond C, hydrogen. But that in mind, every carbon can only have four bond, okay? So it could be just like that. Or you can have R group, triple bond, carbon, like this. Also having the presence of carbon-carbon triple bond and this two will still belong to the homologous series of alkyne because they are holding the functional group of carbon-carbon triple bond. Simple. Next, we have aromatic. Aromatic, the functional group is benzene ring and the structure of benzene ring can be written in two ways. Both are correct. The first way is a cyclo with six carbon. And then you are having a double bond alternate position. That is your benzene. Or your benzene ring can be written in this way. Still a six carbon membered ring with a circle in the center. Both are benzene ring. Both are the same. You can write in any way. Okay. With the presence of benzene ring, most of the compound will be aromatic. That's why the homologous series name is aromatic. And the example of aromatic compound or the example of benzene ring compound will be a benzene ring holding as simple as a CH3. Or it can be slightly more complicated where you have branches. You still have your benzene ring as the main thing. That is your benzene ring. 
and then you could have a branches over here with a carbon like this or you can have more than one branch you could have like this and that both of this is still your homologous series of aromatic due to the presence of benzene ring okay next alcohol so alcohol the one that you are very familiar with the functional group name is hydroxyl hydroxyl over here the structure of hydroxyl is actually oh so can you differentiate the name the homologous series is alcohol the functional group that gives rise to the homologous series is hydroxyl OH. So, your alcohol could be as simple as ethanol, CH3, CH2, OH. Very simple alcohol. It can be cyclopentanol, OH. That is also your alcohol. You can have a mixture of it. You can have a cyclic that holding an alcohol you can even have guys a diol all right all this is the homologous series of alcohol because all of them having the functional group of oh so this functional group is the group that characterize all right it will give characteristic to this compound okay and all this sharing the same functional group and they will be located in the same series of alcohol, all right? They are all in the same series of alcohol. They are homologue to each other. Next, we have phenol. Phenol is a very special case because phenol is the only homologous series that have two functional groups. The first functional group, hydroxyl. So the hydroxyl is OH that we have just learned in alcohol. The second functional group in phenol is benzene ring. If you remember, the six carbon membered ring. All right, that is your benzene ring. So these are the structure that you must have in your phenol. In the other words, the homologous series phenol will look something like this. A benzene ring, the most basic phenol will be your benzene ring holding OH. That is your phenol. Okay? And it will still be phenol even though you have carbon. Alright? It will still be phenol if you are having any alkyl group. And this is still your phenol because the presence of this group. So that is your phenol. And in here, we have two functional groups. The first functional group is your benzene ring. The second functional group is your hydroxyl OH. Simple, easy. You just need to memorize the homologous series name and also you need to memorize the functional group name, okay? Don't do any spelling error. Make sure you know how to write the name correctly and also their group and their structure. Next, haloalkane. When the homologous series is haloalkane, what gives rise to the haloalkane is halogen. All right, the functional group is halogen. Halogen is your group 17, where it can be fluorine, it can be chlorine, bromine, iodine. When your compound holding fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, they will be under the homologous series of haloalkane due to the presence of halogen. So, your example of structure could be as simple as CH3Cl. The CH3Cl over here having the functional group of halogen. That's why they will be sitting under haloalkane. It could be more complicated or it could be slightly longer. All right, more carbon. It could be having more carbon but holding Br. Okay. That is also your haloalkane because the presence of halogen. Guys, it could be in the ring, a four carbon ring, and this ring over here holding fluorine. So that is also your functional group of halogen, and this will still be under the homologous series of haloalkane. Your fluorine, chlorine, bromine is the halogen 
that characterize the compound. Okay, it will characterize the compound. It will give a character to the compound. And all these three compound will be homolog to each other. Homolog means they will be in the same homologous series. Okay, next, ether. When the homologous series is ether, the functional group is alkoxy. What is alkoxy means? How do alkoxy look like? The structure is a carbon holding single bond O in between a carbon. And every carbon deserves four bond. Don't forget that. So the alkoxy over here is the COC. All right, it's the C single bond O single bond C. That is your alkoxy. The simplest ether that I can give to you is a CH3 O CH3. That is the simplest ether that I can give rise to you. Your ether can be more complicated. Your ether could be CH3, CH2, single bond O, single bond C, two different thing. For example, CH3, CH3, H. That is also your ether. As long as you're having the COC, you're having the COC. That is your ether. All right, because they are sharing the same functional group. Your ether can also be in between the ring. You have a O bonded like this. You learn that in your skeletal structure, you know that that is actually your carbon. That is actually your carbon. So this is also your alkoxy. All right, that is also your alkoxy. And all of this were under the same homologous series of ether because they're sharing the same functional group. Can you get that now? Next, we have aldehyde. Aldehyde, the functional group is carbonyl. The carbonyl itself is only C double bond O, but because it's an aldehyde, when it's an aldehyde, the C double bond O must be sitting right next to a hydrogen, okay? That is your aldehyde. The carbon that holding the C double bond O must be holding one hydrogen. That will give rise to the homologous series of aldehyde. The example of aldehyde, you must start off with the HC double bond O. So the simplest aldehyde could be just like that, okay? You must have at least one H attached to the C double bond O. We don't really mind how many carbon you're having in your aldehyde, but only one condition. The C double bond O, the carbon that holding C double bond O, must be at least having one hydrogen. And the next of it, it could be anything. It could be 10 carbon, 20 carbon. We don't really mind. All right? We don't really care how many carbon you're holding next to it. But one of the bond next to the C double bond O must be hydrogen. That is aldehyde. And your aldehyde could be aromatic. When you're having a benzene ring, that is your benzene ring. And then you're having a C double bond O because this carbon only can have four bond. So you only have left one bond right now. So the one bond is hydrogen. And that is still your aldehyde. Your aldehyde because of the C double bond OH, C double bond O and bonded to H, C double bond O and bonded to H. That is your aldehyde. Okay? Remember this because next will be ketone. And if you look at ketone, the functional group is also carbonyl. So we know that carbonyl is C double bond O. But is ketone is different from aldehyde. It's a different homologous series. So what makes ketone different is the C double bond O, you have two more bond. Both of the bond must be bonded to carbon. You cannot bond to hydrogen. Aldehyde difference is the C double bond O must be holding at least one hydrogen. Ketone different. It cannot hold any hydrogen. The C double bond O must be sitting in between carbon. Okay? The C double bond O must be sitting in between carbon. That is your ketone. So you can have the simplest ketone 
is this. In the other words, ketone must have minimum 3 carbon. Alright? Ketone must have minimum 3 carbon. Then only you can form ketone. That is the simplest ketone that you can have. You can even have ketone in a cyclic. So you can have your C double bond O like this. Okay? So that is your ketone as well. You can see that your C double bond O right now is sitting in between carbon. This C double bond O also sitting in between carbon. So both are your ketone. Okay? Simple. Can differentiate aldehyde and ketone? Make sure you can differentiate aldehyde and ketone because they share the same functional group. But the position of functional group, the position of C double bond O must be different. Okay? Ketone, the C double bond O must be sitting in between carbon. Alright? Next, carboxylic acid. The functional group of carboxylic acid is carboxyl. So the carboxyl structure will be C double bond O single bond OH. The C double bond O and single bond OH must be bonded to the same carbon. The C double bond O and the OH must be bonded to the same carbon. And this group of atom is what we call carboxyl. Alright? The example of carboxyl acid could be as simple as this. You can always write your carboxylic acid in the form of COOH. It's the same. Okay? So you can have your carboxylic acid something like this. COOH is still your carboxylic acid. The functional group over here, COOH. The functional group over here, COOH. Both way, both way of writing are correct. Next, we have Ester. Ester functional group is carboalkoxy. How should carboalkoxy look like? Simple. C double bond O, single bond O. You can see that there is no enough bond of this carbon. There is one more bond. The O over here is also one more bond. Okay? So the O over here must be attached to a carbon, to another carbon. Alright? Another carbon or another tiny carbon. It doesn't matter. Okay? But next to this carbon, it can be hydrogen or it can be carbon, okay? So the example of ester that you can have is a C double bond O, single bond O bonded to another carbon or another two carbon bonded to carbon. So that is your ester because they're having the functional group of carboalkoxy. You can have slightly bigger group. Okay, you can have more carbon, it doesn't matter. What important, guys, is the C double bond O and the single bond O must be attached to the same carbon. It must attach to the same carbon. Alright, and it can attach to even a ring. And this is still your ester because you have the presence of your carboalkoxy. There is another way of writing your carboalkoxy other than showing the C double bond O single bond O. Your carboalkoxy can be written straight like this. Okay? So you can have your carboalkoxy like this. And this is still your carboalkoxy. Okay? That is the functional group of carboalkoxy. Next, we have the presence of acyl chloride. For acyl chloride, the functional group having the same name as the homologous series. Okay, they're having the similar name over here. Not similar, it's the same. So what is actually acyl chloride or how should acyl chloride look like? Simple. C double bond O Cl. The C double bond O must be holding Cl. And you can see that the Cl is holding straight directly to the same carbon, okay? And this bond must be bonded to carbon. One carbon, two carbon, 20 carbon ring, it doesn't matter, but must be bonded to carbon. So the simplest acyl chloride that you can have is CH3, C, double bond O, Cl. Other than that, your acyl chloride could be in the form of ring, 
you can have this bonded to C double bond O C L. That is also your acyl chloride, mainly because the C double bond O must be bonded directly to a Cl. That is your acyl chloride. So will this be your acyl chloride? If you look at it, that is your C double bond O. That is your Cl. But obviously, your C double bond O and your Cl are not bonded to the same carbon. So this is not your acyl chloride because the Cl must be directly bonded to the carbon that holding C double bond O. And you see that? The Cl must be directly bonded to the carbon that holding C double bond O. So this is not your acyl chloride. The simplified version of acyl chloride, your acyl chloride can be written in this way. CH3COCl. That is also acyl chloride. But always try to expand it, all right? Always try to expand your structure because that is easier for you to see whether they're attached to the same carbon or not, okay? Next, we have amine. The functional group of amine is amino. Amino structure, simple, N. Nitrogen can have three bonds. Standard nitrogen can have three bonds. The three bonds can attach to hydrogen or carbon depends on the condition, means that my amine can be something like this. Okay, my amine can be something like this. That is also my amine. Okay, my amine can be something like this. So the three bond that the nitrogen is holding, all right, the three bond over here, can be bonded to hydrogen, can also bonded to carbon. Okay, it can be bonded to hydrogen or carbon, like that. All this is still your amine because they're having the functional group of amino. That is your amino. The N itself is the amino. Okay, simple. So it's not necessarily bonded to carbon only or hydrogen only. It can be in a mixture of carbon and hydrogen. Next. You can have amide. Amide over here, the functional group is carboxamide. All right, so amide is the homologous series. Functional group is carboxamide. How should the structure look like? Carboxamide is the C double bond O bonded straight or directly to nitrogen. Carbon can have four bonds, so carbon will have one more bond over here. Nitrogen can have three bonds, so nitrogen will have another two bonds over here. The bond can be bonded to hydrogen or carbon, it doesn't matter. But what matters most is the carbon double bond O. The carbon that holding the double bond O must be bonded directly to the end. Directly. So the same carbon holding C double bond O, the same carbon holding nitrogen. That is your carboxamide. So your carboxamide could look something like this. Okay. Bonded to a C double bond O, bonded directly to N. The N could be holding hydrogen and carbon. It doesn't matter. But what matter most? What matter most is the carbon double bond O must be holding directly to N. That is your carbox amide. Okay, they must be holding directly to the same carbon. In the other words, if I'm having a compound like this, is this structure still your carbox amide? You have your C double bond O here and then bonded to a carbon, and then only your nitrogen. So you can see that your nitrogen and carbon are not holding to the same carbon. Therefore, this is not carboxamide, okay? They must be holding directly to the same carbon, all right? Clear? Next, you have nitro. Nitro, the functional group is simple, cyano. Cyano structure is very simple, C, triple bond N. You know that carbon can have four bonds, so there will be one more bond here. 
or another way of writing your signal, you can have just C and that is the more famous way that we write. So the simplest nitrile compound can be CH3CN. Okay, or it can be in the form of ring. It can be in the form of ring CN. Okay, so by that in mind, nitrogen can only have three bonds. So you already have the three bond completed. So nitrogen won't be holding anything else here. You can expand it in the form of C triple bond N, or you can just simply write it in the form of C N. And that is your nitrile compound because they're sharing the same functional group of cyanol. That is the functional group of cyanol. Simple. Last but not least, the last homologous series that we have is acid anhydride. We also call acid anhydride in the functional group. The structure looks something like this. C double bond O, single bond O, single bond carbon, double bond O. That is your acid anhydride. And most of the time, the carbon will be bonded to carbon over here. So the simplest acid anhydride that you might come across is only holding a CH3, C double bond O, single bond O, single bond carbon, double bond O, CH3. Similar as previous, the C double bond O must be bonded directly to the O and directly to the C double bond O. And that is your acid anhydride, okay? You can have a bigger structure where you can have a ring holding to a C double bond O, the acid anhydride group, and holding to more carbon. So we again, we don't really mind how many carbon you're holding, guys. What we mind is what is the functional group. And the functional group over here is acid anhydride. Okay, simple. So at, I hope at this moment, you can differentiate what is homologous series and functional group. The question can ask you homologous series. The question can ask you functional group. So read the question carefully. Make sure you know what name to write whether it's homologous series or functional group. Let's look at some example of homologous series, okay? So I have a structure over here. So from this compound, you need to identify what homologous series they are. So you can see the presence of C double bond O over here. And the important part is the C double bond O is located between carbon atom. So when it's between carbon atom, then this guy will be ketone. Okay, because it's between carbon atom, so it will be ketone. Next, you have a compound over here is C double bond O H. So you can see that you again have the presence of C double bond O, your carbonyl, but carbonyl is the functional group. The question asking for homologous series. So the C double bond O is sitting next to a hydrogen and then a carbon. Okay, so if I expand it, the H is actually bonded out. It's actually bonded to the carbon and then you have a H. Can you see the difference? The C double bond O is not between carbon. Therefore, this guy will be aldehyde. Okay, this guy will be aldehyde. Next, so you have a C double bond O bonded to a O like that. So what is this? That is your carboalkoxy. In the other words, it's the homologous series of ester. That is the homologous series of ester. Next, you have a COC. You have a COC in here. That is your ether. Homologous series name is ether. Next, you have a six carbon ring with a carbon carbon double bond. Carbon carbon double bond. Simple. The homologous series is alkene. All right, due to the presence of carbon carbon double bond. Next and last but not least for homologous series, oh, the simplest one. You have OH, guys. So the homologous series will be 
alcohol. So look at the so look at the answer that I write when it's a homologous series. The name that I put down is ketone, aldehyde, ester, ether, alkene, and alcohol. That is the homologous series. Let's look at functional group. How do we answer functional group? When you have a compound like this, and the question asks you to identify the functional group. There is so many functional group in here, guys. So what do we do? We are going to circle and label. So we are going to circle correctly and label correctly. So the first one, we start off with C, single bond, O, single bond, C. So over here is your alkoxy. By that in mind, question asking for functional group. So make sure you write the functional group, but not the homologous series. So next, you have over here, this guy. What do we call this? That is your benzene ring. Okay, that is your benzene ring. A six carbon ring with three double bond. That is your benzene ring. Next, over here, your nitrogen. So your nitrogen functional group we call amino. Simple. Circle and label. You need to circle the correct group. So over here, I have OH. So label the OH. That is my hydroxyl. Okay. Next, I have my CL over here. We don't label chlorine, guys. That is your halogen functional group. Okay, last but not least, you have your C double bond O bonded to O bonded to C. And that will be your carboalkoxy. Only one thing guys, no spelling error. Do not do any spelling error. Make sure you memorize the name correctly with the correct spelling. And the way that we answer functional group in details is you must circle them, you must circle the alkoxy that you say, you must circle the benzene ring that you say. So make sure you circle and label, okay? And that's it for functional group and homologous series. I hope you understand and able to differentiate what is actually homologous series and what is actually functional group. Like the name said, guys, functional group is a group of atom that give character to your compound. Homologous series, a series of compounds that have the same functional group. Okay, and thank you for watching. If this video helps you, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.